to get started with our first story here. So if you have not heard by now, former secretary of state, Henry Kissinger has passed away at a hundred years old. I paused there because I don't think most of you, uh, are sad about this. I, I don't, I don't think that you are. What I want to show you is we're going to talk a little bit about his history. We're going to talk about some of the war crimes that Henry Kissinger uh, committed during his time in polit as a political figure. And we're also going to show a comparison here. And I'm going to start with the first one with Morning Joe. If you have been watching the news, you will notice how certain outlets are actually discussing this in a different way. We're going to get started with MSNBC talking about the passing of Henry Kissinger. And I want you to pay attention to the way that they talk about Henry Kissinger and his career. Listen to this. Joe, uh, Andrea was just telling me a story of when she heard the news about the passing of Henry Kissinger. I think we all took a moment to reflect when, when the news broke. Well, so much to reflect on. Uh, yeah. uh, as the New York Times said this morning, rightfully, he was, he was a hugely significant figure in U.S. foreign policy, in American politics. I had no idea. He was on the cover. And for those of us a little bit older, this actually used to mean something uh, <laughs> a, 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 in a significant way. He was on the cover of Time magazine 15 times. Wow. And, um, and one of those times, uh, David Ignatius uh, did not make uh, his boss, Richard Nixon, very happy. It was when Time called Nixon and Kissinger men of the year in 1972. But a comp, not a, a very complex legacy, as well as I mm. must just say on a personal note, a very complicated relationship with Mika's father. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe, he, he did have a complicated relationship with Mika's dad. Uh, he and Zbigniew Brzezinski really were the two towering foreign policy intellectuals of their time. And okay, let's pause here for just a second because I want to add something here. If you notice, the way that they are discussing Henry Kissinger is in more of a favorable way, right? They're talking about Henry Kissinger as though this was a positive person who did good things. Oh, what a legacy Henry Kissinger has. When I get to the clip from Al Jazeera, I think you're going to see the difference, right? And yes, he did have a relationship, a professional relationship with Mika's father. So you have to remember who Mika's father is. And then that will explain to some of you why she's in the position that she's in, you know, how she was able to get that anchor spot on MSNBC. She grew up already a part of the DC political bubble. Let's continue. And a striking thing was that at the funeral uh, of Zbigniew Brzezinski, John Hamry, the head of uh, a think tank called the Center for Strategic and International Studies that Kissinger had been very close to, read a letter from Henry Kissinger in which he expressed deep regret that he'd never really said all the things uh, of, of admiring and praiseworthy of Zbig that he had wanted to in his lifetime. It was a moment that I think everybody in the audience has never forgotten. It showed to me how complicated a person Kissinger was. He, he was struggling, striving as a young immigrant to make it in foreign policy with the patronage uh, of, of the Rockefellers, uh, uh, other prominent people in America. He was a genuinely brilliant person who in his first book uh, set forth the way he looked at the world. It was about stability. His model was the, the Congress of Vienna, if viewers can remember that, in 1815, which established peace in Europe for right. 100 years. And Kissinger was fascinated. How did that happen? He, he, he continued to be that, that diplomat, that balance of power player in the old European sense through his career. He did things we admire. He did some things that I think most people would think were just dreadful. Yeah. But uh, such a complicated person. Yeah. Notice how they always use the term complicated or complex when it's someone that has a troubling legacy, right? Or it's, it's, there's a lot of bad there that they don't really want to get into. People use the same term when they're talking about uh, Israel and Gaza. When they talk about the situation, people will throw out the, the words complex. Oh, it's, it's complex. It's complicated. 
No. And I told you guys before, it's really not. They just don't want to talk about the evil things, the bad things that the state of Israel did to the Palestinian people. Same thing here with Morning Joe. They don't really want to talk about Henry Kissinger's war crimes. So they're going to use these words like complicated and complex. It's not complicated and complex. And we'll get into the details of some of the things that Henry Kissinger did to show you just how simple it is to understand who he was. He re really was. And it is a shame Mike Barnacle's not with us today because, of course, Mike covered the Congress of Vienna in 1815 for the Boston <laughs> Globe. But we'll, no, no. Talk to we'll talk to Mike about that hey. tomorrow. I'm sorry, Ann. It's just a joke. But we're going to talk much more, Mika, about, about Henry Kissinger's legacy. I will just say really quickly, uh, yes, I, your father and uh, Dr. Kissinger. Uh, about as extreme rivals as you you you, you could be uh, while working together. Just read Dr. Brzezinski's diaries to see that. Uh, and yet, he very complex. He wept. He wept. John Henry said. Henry said uh, when hearing of the news and wrote a beautiful letter to your mother and your family. Uh, so, uh, but yeah. we'll be talking about that legacy ahead. You, I'm sure you have thoughts. Well, no, I just think um, I sort of, uh, in my mind, celebrate the moments when they would get together on stage or around a table and they would spar. So you guys see, this is Henry Kissinger and Mika's dad. So that's how deep Mika's political ties go. Guys, you have to understand this. This is why she has the narrative that she has. This is why she was able to get that, that position as an anchor at MSNBC. She was already born into the DC political bubble. In a, in a joyful way over issues, because Willie, they both had, um, a deep appreciation for the complexity of global issues like the ones we're facing today in Ukraine uh, and trying to uh, bring together NATO. And Once again, she's using that word complexity. It's not complex. Ukraine is not complex. Scott Ritter broke that down earlier today very well. Uh, Israel and Gaza is not complex. Multiple people, Norm Finkelstein, Max Blumenthal, et cetera, have broken this down very well. It's not complex. Also, of course, the war in the Middle East, which is our top story this morning. Will it? OK, so notice the way that they spoke about Henry Kissinger on Morning Joe more in a favorable way. Oh, his legacy. And Cindy McCain also spoke about him in a favorable way. Now, Cindy McCain is John McCain's wife. She tweeted this. Henry Kissinger was ever present in my late husband's life. While John was a POW in the later years as a senator and a statesman, the McCain family will miss his wit, charm, and intelligence terribly. And um, I replied there, we won't miss him. So I think that you guys see what's happening, right? The people who are in the political DC bubble, they're saying positive things about Henry Kissinger. Hillary Clinton actually referred to his, uh, Kissinger as her friend, as her friend. Yeah, those are the friends that you have. Now, when we switch over here to Al Jazeera, I think you're going to see a difference. They're going to break down his history and then get into another interview in this video clip here. But I think Al Jazeera does this in a better way where they point out the war crimes. Also, the intercept is also pointing out Henry Kissinger's war crimes. So pay attention to this as we talk a little bit about Henry Kissinger's background. I think this is important for people to hear. United States. Kissinger was born in Germany in 1923. He and his family fled the Nazis in 1938, eventually settling in the U.S. He joined the army during World War II using his language skills in military intelligence. After the war, Kissinger earned a doctorate in political science at Harvard, his ambition to shape U.S. foreign policy. Kissinger got his chance when he joined the Nixon White House in 1969, where his job was to help end the war in Vietnam. He oversaw the secret carpet bombing campaign in Cambodia. Pause. This is one of the troubling ones that we're going to get into uh, later on. Cambodia. And remember, he was supposed to, according to this, he was supposed to uh, draw close to the war in Vietnam, but he actually did not do that. He actually escalated and he made things worse. Estimated as many as a million people were killed. Opponents of the war say Kissinger should have been tried for war crimes. He never apologized. I'm... 
He never apologized. Now, just based on what you heard so far, we're only two minutes in. Notice what they're talking about compared to what Morning Joe talked about, right? So they're telling you about Henry Kissinger's war crimes. I do consider him to be a war criminal. Of course, people like Hillary Clinton would disagree. Cindy McCain would disagree. And I think Mika would also disagree. But this is the reality, folks. Killing over a million people in Cambodia. And he refused, refused to apologize. Certainly, I was strongly supportive of it. It was correct. And it was in the American interest. On Christmas Day 1972, the U.S. launched an air war on North Vietnam to convince Hanoi to resume peace talks. Mr. President, within 10 days, you got these guys to the table, which no other method could have done. This led to the 1973 Paris Peace Accords and a Nobel Peace Prize for Kissinger. But the war didn't end until 1975. So they actually awarded Henry Kissinger with the Nobel Pre Peace Prize. This was after he initiated and facilitated the slaughter of over a million people in Cambodia, civilians, and they give him a peace prize because of the Paris Peace Accords. Crazy. The Nixon administration saw Vietnam as key to stopping the spread of communism but when it came to the Soviet Union and China, Kissinger persuaded Nixon to try detente. In other words, a slight defrosting of the Cold War. The result? Washington and Moscow negotiated their first arms control treaties. And Nixon visited China in 1972. For Kissinger, this was all about giving the US a tactical advantage. Our strategy was to position ourselves in such a way that we were closer to Soviet Union and China than they were to each other. So that in every crisis, we had more options than they did. Meanwhile, Kissinger was still fighting the Cold War in South America and Europe, backing military governments in Chile, Greece and Argentina. We'll get to that in, as well. Remember that the backing the military governments in uh, Greece, Chile and Argentina. He denied supporting the coup which deposed Chilean President Salvador Allende in 1973, leading to the dictatorship of General Augusto Pinochet. But he did support it. There was no policy uh, since to, assassin to assassinate any foreign official. Secret White House recordings later revealed that Kissinger knew the CIA helped Pinochet launch the coup and that he had cancelled the State Department's warnings to Pinochet's government against killing political opponents. His defense? Sometimes statesmen have to choose among evil. Kissinger invented the use of shuttle diplomacy to help broker an end to the 1973 war between Israel and Egypt, creating the foundation for the 1978 Camp David Accords. After Nixon resigned in 1974, Kissinger continued as Secretary of State under President Gerald Ford and spent the remaining decades of his life as an informal advisor to world leaders and corporations. To his critics, a warmonger. To his admirers, a consummate diplomat. So think about what they just said there. So he was an advisor, not just to world leaders, but also to corporations. And they, they split the comparison here. They say that some people see him as a war criminal. Some people see him as a diplomat. Based on the footage that I showed you from MSNBC, I would say that they view him as a diplomat. Al Jazeera is a little bit different. Obviously, they're going to point out some of the war crimes. But most of the media, most of the independent media that I have seen is calling out the truth about Henry Kissinger's uh, war crimes. Now, we get to this part here of the interview, and I want you to hear what this gentleman says. He's the host of Al Jazeera's weekly show, The Bottom Line, and is the founding editor at large at Semaphore, which is a new digital media platform. He joins us now live from Washington, D.C. Thank you for your time. So Henry Kissinger was both celebrated and controversial. Can you put his legacy in shaping foreign affairs into perspective? Yeah, well, I mean, I think there was no more influential foreign policy intellectual and, and, and participant than Henry Kissinger. He shaped the entire 
modern era, not just since the end of the Cold War, but before the Cold War. His book on nuclear weapons and foreign policy in the 1950s became the seminal document at that time on how to think about nuclear weapons. This is before the opening to China, uh, before detente with Russia, and before many of his misdeeds. He is, he is reviled uh, around the world by many for, for having no filter for human rights and embracing autocrats and thugs, but he is celebrated by those who see that he diffused major tensions in the world, particularly with Russia at a key moment, uh, but also China, and led uh, to a very different path at that time. And I think many people today who look at the complexities in the world, there are a lot of human rights atrocities in the world, but they're asking where is the realist today who can help negotiate and channel uh, between powers in the world that are emerging. And I think what- Let's pause here for a second. So I would say that Henry Kissinger was celebrated by those who have little or zero regard for human life, right? The people who don't care about the millions of people that died in Cambodia, the people who don't care about all of his war crimes, who just see this as whatever, it's just collateral damage. I would say those are the people who celebrate him, the people who are a part of the DC political bubble, the people who are a part of Henry Kissinger's circle, people like Henry uh, Hillary Clinton, who called him her friend. But I would say that the fact that he just seemed to have no regard for human life. It's really weird to me how you can come out of a situation. And this is why I wanted you to hear about his background. You can come out of a situation where you are fleeing Nazi Germany, which Henry Kissinger and his family did. So you know what it's like to have terror in your face. You know what it's like to see when you saw the Nazis have such disregard uh, for human life. You see that you grow up seeing that. And then in turn, you get into a political position, you're secretary of state, and then you in turn seem to have just no regard for human life abroad. You would think that coming from that experience that you would actually be more compassionate towards that, but he was not. That's the irony. What's interesting is that Kissinger, as consequential as he, as controversial as he was, never stopped being consequential. Even in April, when going to China, meeting Xi Jinping, when America and China were clearly on a divergent path and perhaps on a train wreck uh, course, he stepped in and basically set a floor on that relationship, reminding both sides how fundamentally globally consequential that relationship was. So he was not loved, and I knew Henry Kissinger. I was the first director of the Nixon Center in Washington uh, in, the, in the early 1990s, and Henry was my co-chairman of my board. Uh, so I had a lot of interaction with him, and he was a man who knew he had a place in history, who was worried how that was going to be, but he continued, he was worried how it would be shaped and who mm. would attack him, but yet he didn't at another level care that much. And Hear what he said? He didn't at another level care that much. So I wanna look at some of the, the, the crimes against humanity that Henry Kissinger was responsible for. Now this is coming from The Intercept. Henry Kissinger, top US diplomat responsible for millions of deaths, dies at 100. This is written by Nick Terse. And I want to get to this part right here. Kissinger helped prolong the Vietnam War and expand. Oh, sorry. Kissinger helped prolong the Vietnam War and expand that conflict into neutral Cambodia. Let's pause there for a second. Neutral, neutral Cambodia. So that's that's a big part of the problem. Cambodia was not a part of this conflict. It was a neutral zone. And Henry Kissinger had no problem, no problem facilitating slaughter in Cambodia, facilitated genocides in Cambodia, East Timor, and Bangladesh, accelerated civil wars in Southern Africa, and supported coups and death squads throughout Latin America. He had the blood of at least 3 million people on his hands. And this is according to biographer Greg Grandin. There were few people who have had a hand in as much death and destruction, as much human suffering in so many places around the world as Henry 
Kissinger. That's coming from veteran war crimes prosecutor Reed Brody. A 2023 investigation by The Intercept found that Kissinger, perhaps the most powerful national security advisor in American history and the chief architect of U.S. war policy in Southeast Asia from 1969 to 1975, was responsible for more civilian deaths in Cambodia than was previously known. According to an exclusive archive of U.S. military documents and interviews with Cambodian survivors and American witnesses. Goes on to say, The Intercept disclosed previously unpublished, unreported, and underappreciated evidence of hundreds of civilian casualties that were kept secret during the war and remained almost entirely unknown to the American people. So I just want to explain something here. So kudos to the intercept for uncovering that information. When you facilitate war in a neutral zone, that is considered to be a war crime. War actually does have rules and Henry Kissinger broke those rules. Kissinger bore significant responsibility for attacks in Cambodia that killed as many as 150,000 civilians, up to six times more non-combatants -com than the United States has killed in airstrikes since September 11th. Whew. Then they start to talk about his, his background, which we already went through that. And I want to go to this piece here. Kissinger played a key role in prolonging the U.S. wars in Southeast Asia, resulting in deaths of tens of thousands of American troops and hundreds of thousands of Cambodians, uh, Laotians, and Vietnamese. During his tenure, the U.S. dropped 9 billion pounds of munitions on Indochina. In 1973, the Norwegian Nobel Committee awarded the Nobel Peace Prize to Kissinger and his North Vietnamese counterpart, Lee, Dung, Lee Duc Tho, for jointly having negotiated a ceasefire in Vietnam. So negotiating the ceasefire in Vietnam is one thing, but how do you give someone the Nobel Peace Prize after they had all those people killed? In a neutral zone. There is no other comparable honor. Kissinger would wait, later write of the prize he received for an agreement to end a war. He encouraged and extended a pact that not only failed to stop that conflict, but also was ultimately immediately violated by all parties. Documents released in 2023 show that the prize among the most controversial in the awards history was given despite the understanding that the war was unlikely to end due to the truce. However, his counterpart fell refused the award. He said that the U.S. had breached the agreement and aided and encouraged its South Vietnamese allies to do the same, while also casting the deal as an American capitulation. During the last 18 years, the U.S. undertook a war of aggression against Vietnam, he wrote. American imperialism has been defeated. So you can read the rest of this article on your own is by uh, the intercept. This was published yesterday at 9 49 PM. But I think there's something else about Henry Kissinger that you seem to may not know. Henry Kissinger is as much as we're hearing people now, people like Chuck Schumer, right? Calling for an end to anti-Semitism. And of course I do not agree with anti-Semitism. But some of these same people that are vocal about that seem to forget that, you know, Henry Kissinger uh, probably would have fallen into the same category that Chuck Schumer is talking about. Now, Katie Halper posted this. She said, Dear ADL, you left this out of your Kissinger eulogy. A eulogy, sorry. Sorry, guys, can't talk tonight. Dear ADL, you left this out of your Kissinger eulogy. Now, she is responding to this tweet from the ADL, which actually has community notes added to it now. 
They said that Henry Kissinger was a towering intellect, diplomat, and practitioner who, not without controversy, helped shape American foreign policy with a lasting impact worldwide. A refugee of Nazi Germany and the first Jewish Secretary of State, he was unapologetic about his heritage and he embraced his embrace of the importance of American global power and diplomatic values. Community Notes added this, misleading. Henry Kissinger was, in fact, apologetic about his Jewish heritage. This is very important for people to see, especially around President Nixon. Nixon's White House counsel recalls Kissinger assaging Nixon's rants about dirty, rotten Jewish traitors protesting Vietnam by assuring him he was one of the good ones. So, here is another example of an organization like the ADL trying to say something positive about someone that obviously was misleading and was not completely true. So Katie Helper had to come in and debunk this, and she actually shared screenshots for the ADL to see. Here's one example. Henry Kissinger, if it were not for the accident of my birth, I would be anti-Semitic. That's coming from Henry Kissinger. It's really interesting though, because on Twitter, there are other people and there are groups like APAC and the ADL that are actually calling people like Katie Halper, uh, what is it, self-hating? They're calling her like a self-hating Jew, right? But here's Henry Kissinger saying, if it were not for the accident of my birth, I would be anti-Semitic. Henry Kissinger said that about his own people. And this is who Morning Joe is applauding. This is, his, this is Hillary Clinton's friend. There's more screenshots. So this is a close up of that here. It goes on to say any people who has been persecuted for 2000 years must be doing something wrong. Do you guys see what is really problematic about the statement that Henry Kissinger made? This is a problematic statement. He said this about Jewish people. He said this about his own people. But MSNBC, CNN, all these different pundits on network television are out there kissing Henry Kissinger's ass. The same ones for the past couple of weeks who have been calling protesters who are protesting for the self-determination of the Palestinian people who are calling for an end to the occupation and the oppression of the Palestinian people, the same commentators who are smearing those protesters and calling them anti-Semitic are applauding the legacy of Henry Kissinger, who clearly apparently was anti-Semitic. Against his own people. This screenshot here says in 1985, he publicly supported President Ronald Reagan's wreath laying ceremony at a military cemetery in Bitburg, West Germany, where members of the Waffen SS are buried. Kissinger opposed the idea of a U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum. Get this straight, guys. He opposed the idea of the Holocaust Memorial Museum. But everyone is applauding this guy's legacy and they're smearing the protesters. One more here. In 2011, here there too, a secret U.S. State Department documents from late 1972 were likewise published, revealing that Kissinger was irked by the concern expressed by American Jews about the fate of Soviet Jewry, calling the former self-serving bastards. We'll talk about Chuck Schumer tomorrow night, but where's Chuck Schumer on this? Where's Amy Schumer on this? All the people who have been criticizing protesters 
calling for an end to occupation and oppression of the Palestinian people. Where are you now? So shout out to Katie Halper for sharing that. Here are some of his war crimes in a list. Henry Kissinger crimes. One, Cambodia bombing. 500,000 killed is actually over a million killed now. Remember what they said in the Intercept article that they didn't even release all the numbers at that point in time. East Timor invasion support 200,000 deaths. Chile government overthrow. U.S. backed Pinochet's dictatorship. Bangladesh killings, 3 million deaths. Argentina's dirty war, 30,000 killed and 30,000 disappeared. Laos bombing, 200,000 deaths. Vietnam war toll, 2.5 to 3 million deaths. And you have people like Morning Joe and Fox News and CNN out there applauding this guy's legacy. There was a guy on Twitter, I should have saved this tweet. There was a guy on Twitter and he said, you should not be cheering on or applauding the death of someone and da da da. It just makes you look really bad. Maybe, but the guy that people were applauding Killed all these people. Millions. 